Welcome back to the Museum of Graffiti's Art Talks. My name is Alan Kett. Happy to be here today to uh, welcome Rusty. And I think we... ...with Rusty in just a minute. Rusty, how are you? What up, what up? How we doing? What up? Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me onto the show. I, uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, doing this whole interview. No doubt. So, so just, you know, we're jumping back on. I haven't been on here in a couple of weeks. For everybody to know, this is our Art Talk series. We interview writers from around the world and get into their story, their career, how they started in this movement and uh, and kind of take you take us through a, a timeline of your graffiti life, so to speak. So we're gonna just jump right into it and and let you really guide us and guide our story. And for those that are out there listening, uh, the Art Talk series is supported by badges. And so if you guys can contribute a uh, dollar, two dollars to the Museum of Graffiti, that's greatly appreciated as well. So let's get right into this. And and tell us about uh, sort of the origins of your name. You know, wh where did you come up with Rusty and and how long have you had that name? Uh, so that name came when I came back into Graph. Uh, I think before I can really answer that, we should maybe start from the beginning, which helps. maybe makes more sense. But, you know, when I first started, I came into it through the hardcore skateboard scene. So my best friend was in a hardcore band. He would travel around and play shows. I had an SUV at the time, so I would lug all the gear, go to the shows, and, you know, would see graph and whatever and skateboarding all the time. So that's kind of was my inlet into the the scene. But, you know, I was young. I was like, I don't know, 16, 15, 16. And I didn't really know much about it. I knew basics. So, like, I had all every other month I had a different name and you know they were all meaningless and none of them it was literally pulling words out of a hat whatever and, and, what, uh, and what city was this in so this is Boston so so I grew up on the outskirts of Boston and but always going into the city so driving along the Mass Pike and this is back in 2001, before the big buff from Boston. Uh, you had you had people crushing the city, and uh, it, it was always interesting to me seeing graph and being like, "Yo, how did these people, you know, get to that spot and paint this?" And and I was just always attracted to the colors and and just the spots that 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 people would paint. So, uh, and then driving around to all these hardcore shows to towns like Lauren, Lowell, you know, uh, Brighton, Alston, anybody from the area knows these, you know, these are towns that had a lot of graph at the time. And, uh, you know, it was just very inspiring to me. So, so you end up starting and, you know, the Rusty that we know now through your Instagram account is, is this person, sort of the explorer. But you sent me a photo of your first piece, which is here. Yeah, so this is a, this is a track side along the Amtrak line going into Providence, Rhode Island. And, I, you know... I didn't know what I took some cans. I was with two buddies. We went literally during the day. I don't even think we we like hid when the when the train came by. Like we were that toy. We didn't even like care or know. Just, you know, young and 
and stupid. And, uh, you know, I look, I look at this now and I'm just like, yeah, oh, this is crazy. But, uh, but yeah, that was, that was kind of my thing. First starting out was doing a lot of the Amtrak line track side spots and like, you know, cutty little like abandoned buildings type of stuff. And, uh, and yeah, that that's that's just kind of where it all. Started. What 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 is this? What does this say? So it says it says Coca K O C A, and it's funny because at a hardcore show, I met a dude who wrote Cola with a K K O L A, and we were supposed to link up and do like a soda can production thing, and. Uh, it, it never happened, but, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where, where it all began. So did you stay, uh, Coca for very long? No, no. So I got caught, uh, being stupid. So, uh, that was part of the reason I went through multiple name changes and, uh, so that I had that for maybe, I mean, it was the first name I had, but you know, maybe six months, if that, you know. But uh, that was a lot of fun. You have another version. What, uh, what was that? And this is another version of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These all say the past three you've shown are all, are all Coca uh, from Again, this is like 2001, maybe-ish, probably 2002. And I linked up uh, with these two guys who write Epic, E-P-Y-C, and Fewer. Uh, I, ac I actually think they're in Miami now. But, uh, you know, I started kind of meeting people that locally that painted so started getting a little bit more into it. And then this kid moved to my town from California. And uh, everybody was like, oh, these two need to connect. So like literally the first day I met him, I literally think we left school and went and painted and started skating together. And, and but it was all like, I'm literally in high school at the time, and this is obviously before Instagram, but we did have 12 ounce profit for those who remember 12 ounce. And, you know, that was kind of my uh, internet exposure to, to graph going into the different forums and, and being able to see kind of what people were doing and, you know, people joke about sliding into DMs nowadays. Back then, it was the the PMs, the private message, where you could you could try and talk and connect with people, which which I did connect with a few writers and painted with a couple different people. Um, but uh, but yeah, Epic and and Fewer were my first two kind of like, I guess you could say partners. Uh, you know, going into the game. So this was another stupid name I had. I think I pronounced it uh, E-S-E-D. -E you know, again, no, no idea what I was doing, but there was, there were freights uh, that were at the time easily accessible for me. So <clears throat> I was doing a lot of, a lot of freights and, and just track sides, being on the tracks a lot. And so, you know, speaking of freights and track sides, were you seeing a lot of things coming in where, you know, you mentioned connecting with people on 12 ounce. And for those that out there that don't know, 12 ounce profit started off as a graffiti zine out of Miami uh, done by a guy who used to write Raven. And he also built a pretty incredible website that had a forum component to it where people would write and there would be subjects and let's say freights or steel or all this stuff was there. And it had 
thousands and tens of thousands of comments and photos and all types of people on there and bloggers. And I was a blogger on there at one point, uh, but it was a really great place to get information at the time and to find out what's going on. And so just, you know, for those of you guys out there that don't know that, uh, but the question is, you know, were you seeing things on freights and were you, you know, were the things coming through that caught your eye and perhaps gave you some inspiration? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So just real quick too, on the mention of the zines, you know, aside from 12 outs, the other big thing was, I'm sure anybody from, from the Boston area, Tower Records on the corner of Newberry Street and Mass Ave was like the spot that sold graph mags. So we used to, to take the train, go to Tower Records, buy up all the mags, and, and we used to like lurk and kind of wait and see if anyone else, cause like, again, yeah, you didn't, it was really hard to connect and meet with people, especially at me, such a young age. And at the graph was such a mystery to me at them. So I would, I would literally wait at tower records to see if anybody would come in and look at the graph mags and kind of look like, did they have paint on their shoe? Like, was this guy a writer? Like, you know, which, uh, I never had any luck doing, but, um, yeah, that was just a, a fun little thing from back in the day, but I have all the 12 ounce mags. I, I kept them all, uh, all graph mags. I, I save everything. So, but you you end up becoming rusty at some point. What? When did that happen? And you know, I see this piece here as as one of your early pieces. Yeah. So this was actually in Amsterdam, my first trip to Europe. So, uh, essentially, wrote all these names, stopped, and then. When I came back, it was actually kind of a joke um, that I don't really, to be honest, remember the origin, but it was like a joke with some buddies. And, you know, I was always drawing. And so I kind of started painting it. But I, at this point, I understood more that like, okay, you got to keep a name and it, it just, it, it stuck. I, I think to be honest, it was like, the joke was it was rusty with like a tilde, you know, and it was supposed to be pronounced like rusté. And uh, not that I'm Spanish or anything like that, but it, it, it was literally just like a stupid joke with, with some friends. And I was like, you know what? I was like that, those letters, that name, like, I kind of like it and, and it, it just stuck. So you, so you continue to, to paint, but now with this name and you start to experiment with styles and you, you know, you start to do different things with letters. Yeah. So I want to talk about this photo right here. This photo means a lot to me. Um, so I stopped painting in about 2005. I got caught twice. I was a minor. They were kind of like, look, you know, you got two strikes, three strikes, you're out type of thing. And uh, this is around the same time that I was a bit older now. I discovered women and going out and just, I never stopped. I always continued to go on 12 ounce and, you know, look at graph, but but I, I got away from painting uh but always had that interest so in 2010 i was on my way to work and i noticed some new graph in an alley uh near where i was living at the time so i pulled in to take photos and there there were two guys painting and it was uh hells h-e-l-z and and lost lost oh actually and uh I just kind of hit it off with these guys and, and Hells who uh, unfortunately has passed 
and uh, he leaves behind a wife and, and two kids, uh, Shay. But uh, he really kind of took me under his wing and was always super cool to me and saw that I cared and liked graph, but just, just didn't know what I was doing. And I was really struggling with a style at the time. So this, this right piece that is up right now was a sketch that Hells did for me that I brought to life on a wall. Um, and I, I did it at the time when he was still around and like he was super pumped and uh, it definitely helped guide me in a direction for where you know i i am today so so yeah th this piece right here is uh ha has a lot of meaning there for me amazing great and great story and it's it's interesting how we connect with writers just how that happens sometimes by chance and and those that you know give style to others and you know want to see writers succeed and and improve so yeah, he was, was, he was definitely a mentor to me very early on. And I ha I have to say, it meeting him in that alley that day is was the driving force in getting me back into graph in a more and looking at it at a more serious uh light of like here's how to actually do this. Cause I never had that. Like I said. When I started, it was me and, and other people my age, teenagers, nobody knew what they were really doing, running around, and we never connected with that mentor type. So I, I think that's part of why it just kind of also maybe faded out. But when I met Hells, he, he really, you know, w would get on me about, you know, getting out and painting and, and learning and, and, and all of that. So rest in peace, hells. Yes. So you yeah. start, you, you, you get some style from hells. You see it here and you, and you sort of run with it. Yeah. Cause I, I, he, I look, obviously looked up to him and, and his whole like crew and, and, you know, some of the other guys there, that were cool and would let me kind of come around and, you know, they'd be doing a, a production and I'd be like off on a, <laughs> on the side, like painting, but they would, you know, it was cool that they let me come and, and would kind of walk over and, and kind of give me pointers and, and whatever, but I didn't really have much other direction and Hell's was, you know, such a, uh, a mentor to me that I was like honored that he kind of gave me this, even though it was his came from his style. I, I kept running with it for probably, I would say a good, like, I would say almost maybe my, that first year, I, I probably kept very close to, to that style. So is this, is this now, what year is it that we're talking about? Uh, we're probably in like 2012, maybe something right, like that. So you took, so you took a long, a long break. I from from '05 to 2010, I didn't really do anything. Yeah, and then 2010 slowly started getting back into it. Uh. And then in and around 2013, I moved to Connecticut and uh, I didn't know anybody and I really didn't have anything to do in my free time. And, at, you know, for those who've been to Hartford, I mean, there's not much to do and uh there's a lot of a lot of graph and I was at a spot and met uh, Rio R E O one from high crew and he because of 12 ounce profit 
and graph mags, I was very familiar with who he was as a writer and uh, the level they were doing a lot of productions. They were in graphotism and just all over 12 ounce profit. So coming from Boston, he was like shocked that I knew who he was. And I was like, yeah, of course I know who you are. And then he was another kind of, kind of took over, I guess you could say that mentor role as, as he's like a, he's like an artist, like outside of graph. He, he's just a naturally talented, gifted artist. So he started showing me a lot more on technique and, and style as well, but more so like, like basic, real basic, like technique stuff that, that really helped me kind of go to that then next level from where, where Hells had, had brought me up to. Amazing. So is this here in, in Connecticut? Yeah, this is in Connecticut. Yeah. The character is done by uh, this girl Muse um, that I randomly met and she had never done graffiti, but she liked to paint. And I kind of was like, well, you should do graffiti. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't know if she still really paints. I know she still draws and stuff, but yeah, her and I would go out painting for, for like, at least I'd say close to a year. We, she would do characters. Very cool. Is and this then this more, more Connecticut. Yeah, and then this is where I started kind of branching to, like, if you look at my stuff today, this is still the kind of the basic structure of even my letters today, in some sense. But uh, this is probably 2013, maybe even 14, right around, right around there. And this is done, this, that, that piece was done with Krylon fan tip, by the way. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and so, you know, we forget nowadays that, you know, when there are so many paint options that just wasn't, it's not always the case. You know, people don't always have access to fancy spray tips or fancy paint. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so uh, this is so this is definitely, you know, you can see that it's a bit of your foundation right here of what you're doing, as you mentioned, and you start to see it, it's again here, you see how it's starting to shape up. And you're you're sort of your style is getting tighter. And as much as it's also getting looser, in a sense, it's getting more uh, neater, but also looser. What what was happening that were you just painting so much that you were just getting the so, hang of it? So I felt at the time I needed to make up for lost time. So I literally dedicate and I'm older, I got I have time and I literally was drawing and painting every single day. That's all I did for a years from like, I mean, I'm still, I think going pretty strong, but it's, it's not quite, but I, I felt, man, I really need to catch up. I love this. I, I just got to really put in that, that time and, effort and energy so it's just just a lot of drawing and a lot of painting and so were you still in connecticut at this time yeah this piece is actually done in rhode island for a uh, tomb rest in peace uh who is a part of hell's crew uh dbm he was also in new york for a while but uh, every year they do a tomb memorial wall. So this was, uh, I think this was a tomb memorial wall. 
Yeah, it it must have been. They they do his crew was doing a production and because again that connection with Hells and I had met Tomb a few times, this was where probably I got invited down. You know, I wasn't put on the actual production, but I was painting the wall across from the production. Um you know, which was always very inspiring to me, you know, just I've always been a big like fan of like product like FX crew, like like themed productions were always so I loved like just even if I couldn't paint and I knew a production was going on, I would I would go just to watch. Sure. Yeah, those are always very, very special moments. Yeah, which which looking thinking back, because we I know we kind of maybe been jumping around a little bit, but Back in like 2003, I want to say, uh, 3A Crew did a production uh, right, right, literally like a mile from my my house. And I, I had met Kems and we painted maybe once or twice, but Kem, uh, Gesser, and Totem too, and Epic, uh, we're doing this production and it was like a two, three day production. And I literally spent all two or three days there just watching and, and hanging out with those guys. Cause it was just so and that, that was a very, you know, uh, motivating and inspirational experience at the time for me, for sure. I could imagine and so, you know, you, you decide to really go all out. To uh, hold, hold on. I'm sorry. That guesser is correcting me. That was, it was 2001 when that production went down. So, yeah. So uh, 20, 20 years ago. 20 years ago. And fast forward, it's later now, 2014, 15. And, and you're deciding that you have to make up for lost time and and produce like a madman and paint like a madman and i think you know you know from not knowing you but seeing your uh social media it looks like you you travel a lot to paint and so i see images like this and and this is kind of what i think of you and the guys you paint with now sort of running off somewhere to find a hidden spot or a, a special spot yeah, so so my well, how would you say it? It it first just became all about painting and developing like my own style and catching up, if you will, or whatever. And it then became more about the people that I was meeting and the places I was going became just as enthralling to me as, as painting. So it was this like ultimate, you know, adventure of traveling somewhere new, meeting new people and painting graffiti. Like to me, there's just, you can't beat that in in life so uh and that was part of it too is is i i felt you know okay new england is very small you know boston rhode island connecticut you you can in two hours you, you can be in three different states so fortunately it also worked well where I was like, well, let's go a little further. Let's go to New York, you know, let's go to New Jersey. Let's go to DC. And I made it a, a point. I want to say that was 2015 that I was going to be in a different city every month for a year. So minimum 12 cities in 12 months in a year minimum it i i think i ultimately did i think my best year i did like 
something like 20, 23 cities in a, in a year, <clears throat> in one year. I'm, I'm not sure, but I was fortunate. I had the time, you know, I don't have kids. I was single and I, I, all I cared about was, was painting. So that's just made it my mission to do. And so your style changes dramatically. It, it improves much more than what we saw earlier. How, but how did that leap for you happen? Well, I'd also like to point out though, so if you look at this piece compared to one you showed earlier where I mentioned I used the Krylon fan tips, that's this yeah. one. You still have the heart under the T, the heart under the R, those are two still staples that I still use in my pieces today. And kind of the kick out on the uh, right leg of the R, it, my R still kicks out that same way. And, uh, you know, yes, it's evolved a lot, but I'm just trying to point out that the basic structure is still there from that piece however long ago yeah no you can see it there's just a lot more going on although the letters seem like they're basic they're the extensions the the bars the stars the arrows like there's there's a lot of um there's a lot going on in this piece yeah so i i would say it evolved. I, I've always felt my, I, well, let me, hold on. I've always wanted my own graph to be legible. So like New England's style, in my opinion, is a very simpler, funky structured style. And I always hated it when like I was on the train passing graphs and i'm like i don't even know what that says like i don't know who that is like i reckon yeah i recognize the style but what does that say so i always wanted my graph to be legible obviously this is a bit more of like a wild style tech piece but i think it's still somewhat legible but this really evolved from painting with uh like like Guess and, and Chem, where it was more like kind of in casual comments, they'd be like, hey, why don't you add some bars? <laughs> like I'd never even, you know, or like, hey, why don't you like throw an arrow at the end? Like not necessarily, hey, you should do this and, and specifically, but literally a comment as basic as, yo, why don't you throw some bars? Or why don't you throw an arrow on the end? And just little little things like that over time just kind of uh, evolve. But I also like, I'm always looking at other graffiti and also a lot of my inspiration in my graph doesn't even come from graph, if that makes any sense. Sure, sure. No, I, I can understand what, you, what you're saying. So let's look at some more of these. Cause I think that there is, you know, you're mentioning this, uh, the camaraderie of painting and how even these casual comments have, you know, you know give you the idea to, to add it and to try new things. And I think that that's part of, you know, when you paint with a crew or, or with other talented individuals, you, they, they, it, it can rub off on you so to speak. Yeah, you know, I, I've always tried to take something away from everybody I meet. Uh, you know, I've painted with a lot of different people. And even if I'm not a, a personal fan of their style, maybe, I can still learn and take things away to apply to my own. And it's funny because 
I've even gone back to a few people and been like, oh yeah, I, I got that from like watching you or, and they're like, I don't see that at all. But in my head, it triggered something that got me to that next evolution, if you will. Sure. I mean, and this piece is an example. You're also playing a lot with color. I mean, or you start seeing, you know, you're really the way they use color, the blends, the shading, it's changed dramatically from the crime on fan tips. To me, color is just as important as structure. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people might disagree with me on that, but uh, as far as piecing goes, I color and I spend probably more time coming up with my color than I do with my letter structure, you know, because my style, I've kind of, I'm kind of happy. It's, it's always progressing, but I'm currently kind of happy with where it's at. And I feel the color is what brings it to life. So, uh, yeah, but it's, it's tough coming up with, uh, you know, if you're painting a lot and then you got to come up with a different scheme every time it, it, it can get tricky. Well, I mean, you're doing things like this, this is like, a a sand color outline, you know? And so, you know, when you speak of color, it's not just the, the, the inside, but also the outlines and, and everything else, right? There's there, this is, has a lot of color in it. Yeah. I've been big on the rendered 3ds lately where I think this one has four colors, uh, you know, there's the outline color and then I think two darker and one lighter. So a total of four colors just in the, the outline here to get that, that rendered, you know, very graphic looking 3D effect. Sure. It looks like a sticker. Yeah. Like yeah. Like... And here you have a bit of that as well. Again, very, very graphic, very bold, very clean and, uh, and neat. Yeah, to me, graffiti, it's fun. It, it's an, for me, it's an outlet to escape reality, even though graffiti has kind of become my reality, but it's to escape everything. So I always make sure it's very bright, fun, and and loud because to me that's what graffiti is it's loud it's fun and it's it should be a good time so i try and express that through my my color schemes and and movement so you know to give the audience an idea behind this piece you know what is uh, a piece like this take how long does it take to create something like this so this piece was painted uh with Chems and Select from Puerto Rico. Uh, they both came to California, where I'm at now. And we had all, you know, Chems being a super tech piecer and Select being a, a wild style piecer. I was like, all right, guys, we got to do a big uh, burner wall. So I was able through the homie Threat uh, lined us up this wall and this took we did this wall over two days but to be clear uh, I think the way it went was we started the wall the first day but I don't think we spent the whole day I actually think we left and painted something else and then the next day, we actually went to Mexico and painted with the homie Scof in the morning, which was crazy. That, that was a wild morning. And then literally came back. We got up like 4 a.m., went to Mexico, painted with Scof, crossed back over by like 10 or 11 a.m., I think, and then finished the wall so 
it was done over two days, but if you were to talk hours, you know, it, it was probably a total of like eight, eight hours of, of actual painting. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot going on with the, especially not just the piece itself, but even the background. Yeah. And it's good when you can space it out over, over a lot of time like that, then you're not rushing and you can really focus on, you know, cause again, it's, it's the whole package. You know, if you have a, a, a super burner, but your background is, is blah, like, yeah, it's cool. You got a super burner, but the whole package isn't there. So, you know, it's nice to be able, cause a lot of people they'll spend all this time on their piece and then they kind of just like rush the background at the end. Whereas if you take that extra extra half day or, or whatever, if you're fortunate enough to have a spot that allows it, you know, you can really, uh, you know, pull it all together as a whole. And so th there's a piece like this, this kind of production, does this last? This is, is still running. Still yeah, this is yeah. still running. This, this is probably, gee, I don't really remember. I think it's been a year, actually. I don't know if if I don't know if Select is in the is watching, but uh, I think we painted this literally last November, and uh, and it's still running. So, well, I love, I love the, the the story of just the, the moving around, going from spot to spot, and then coming back to finishes. And you know, I see things like this, and I could imagine that you might do more than one of these a day. Yeah, so uh, Kems and I, for a period, were trying to do two big chromes a day. I mean, he, he's obviously, he, he's like an alien from Planet Graffiti, but uh, we kind of motivate each other. And, you know, I got into doing the big chromes through Kems, and, I, you know, it's, it's very addicting. And then it was like, man, like we got to find spots. And that's kind of what kind of forced more of the traveling was, you know, these spots are, are not easy to come by. So it, it really pushed, you know, trying to go out and, and, and find these spots. And we were traveling and going to wherever we had to to do them. Right, the, you got the 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 adventurer sort of explorer mindset. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like I like I said, the adventure to me is is just as important and and fun as as actually painting painting the piece. I can understand that. I mean, this looks like a pretty desolate spot right here. Yeah, we did two this day as well, if I remember correctly. But uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, I don't think much of it, I guess, anymore. But, you know, when you think about, okay, you got to load up a duffel bag with at least 20 cans to do one of these, plus your ladder, plus like whatever other you know, equipment, you know, you end up, you're lugging, I don't know, I, I'm just gonna like throw a number out there, but I would guess at least 30 pounds between the paint, the ladder, and whatever else. And then, you know, you're, you're typically hiking, or, or in the woods, or just wherever, for like at least a mile carrying, obviously, the, the way back is a, a lot lighter, because all your cans are empty. But you know, it's definitely a lot that goes into doing these that I don't think people always really realize or think about. They just see some big chrome simple letters and think, oh, whatever. But when it comes to actually doing it and what's involved, it's it's a lot. Sure. And, and you know, it's interesting when you see an image like this, there's other people that have been there before you. There's There's other tags and things around the spot and so you know you, you're not alone in exploring and trying to find these places 
Yeah, of of recent, you know, obviously like the grail spots or the virgin spots that, you know, haven't linked up with, with style out here in, in California. He He's big on not just going big, but finding the spots that no one's been to yet. So that's kind of been the next uh, kind of step here is not just finding the spots to go big, but finding the spots that, that no one's painted yet. And, and are you still able to find spots like that or has everything been sort of touched at this point? Nah, they're out there. They're out there. I mean, the, the traveling it's, it's, it's now gotten where, you know, it ain't something that's going to happen in a day. You know, you might be, it's might be a five hour drive one way and, you're camping in a, in a tent, literally like in the middle of nowhere, but, or sleeping in a car, but, but they're out there. Amazing. And he, and here you see another one of these, these giant chrome pieces and he, you know, to, to do these pieces and go this scale, you know, your style is really, you know, simple and bold and chunky where you can probably see these, you know, from a really far distance. Which so that's on, nothing obstructing. Yeah, and to be clear, this is like on purpose. I get people a lot of times who are like, yo, why don't you ever piece when you do these big chromes? But to me, that's not what it's about. It's it's what you just said. It's just being big, loud, legible, and 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 there. You know, I save the techie stuff for when I'm doing a, a techie piece you know i'll do a chrome piece but you know smaller when i do i i purposely like keeping these simple when i when i go big i understand you know one of the things that 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 i've noticed is you know people do and you see it here are these sort of uh these layers, these shadows that are multiple colors. And here you see like green bands behind your piece. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just, you got your standard drop shadow on letters and then you got your 3D, you know, and, and it's just a different way to kind of switch things up and, and give a different effect and a different look. The, the, these can be tricky. The, the, you know, these get a little tricky. Once you get to like the third or fourth layer of drop shadow, you, you can get lost in the sauce there. Well, so, so it becomes a lot of paint as well, right? Now you're, you're you're leveling up in more colors, but actually, more tans. it actually becomes less paint because okay. you need more colors, but you're using only a little. So, like the last green in this, if you look, there's really not not much. So, yeah, you, I guess you're you're bringing more colors, but you're using less of the paint versus if I had done just a standard 3d, I probably would have killed at least two or three cans of that really dark green, the first outline color versus here. Yeah. I don't think I killed a single can of any color other than the fill, you know? So, so question for you, when you're preparing, you know, let's say this piece, are you know are you doing a sketch are you taking a sketch like you know you mentioned before that the colors involve planning are you a pen and paper guy or are you a guy who's now like an ipad pro digital guy all right well i won't go down i don't own an ipad and i'm not gonna even go down that road right now but i'm a pen and paper guy and for those who know me i almost always have a sketch it doesn't even matter how simple like one that big chrome i think one of the most i probably had a sketch for that uh i've always always have a sketch of recent and when i say recent i would say the last like two months i've been getting away <clears throat> from sketches and just trying to 
I mean, I still sketch every day, but not necessarily bringing to a wall because I don't know. I'm just trying to be more loose with it, I guess you could say. I would, but I, I tend to be very that. structured. I know my color scheme when I show up. I have the sketch. It's typically everything's already planned. Right. No surprises. Correct. Correct. So, so I say that because, you know, I, I would imagine, you know, just hearing you speak about the amount of sketching that you're doing, that it, you, you have it in your brain already. You, you have all these ideas already in you that, like you said, you could almost not take them anymore because you've, you know, you've physically written them, you physically have drawn them out. And so that movement, that memory exists within your mind already. Correct. But I, I, the reason I think it's important to sketch, and this is, might sound a little crazy coming from me with very simple stuff, but, you know, I guess more so with the piecing, with super tech, like burner pieces, it's, I want to that keep evolving. And I feel if I don't sketch, I'm going to fall complacent and everything i'm just going to keep doing the same arrow here and i'm just going to keep falling back on the same things even though again like my structure and style is pretty mapped out but i think having that sketch and sticking to it and and trying new things is what helps to evolve and progress that style Got it. So you're, so you're, you know, in your sketching process, that's where you are trying to innovate and create new things that you'll eventually, you know, bring to a wall. Yeah. When I'm at the wall, I don't want to be thinking about what's going like I, cause I take my time painting. So for me, I'd rather have where the arrows are going and all this already mapped out so I can spend my time keeping it nice and clean, working on the background versus, you know, if you're spending all this time trying to figure out where to put your out, you're going to run out of time and maybe not do as much with the piece that you wanted to versus if it's a sketched out and you just stick with the sketch, that part's going to go real quick. I follow you. And so, you know, w within some of these, uh, these pieces here, that we're showing there's a lot of different styles that you're trying rocks overlaying hollow pieces and you really see that you're pushing yourself to really try lots and lots of different things also things like this you know a piece like this that some people might think is quite simple i would imagine it's not so simple to execute or, no, or correct me if i'm wrong this this was tricky and that's the thing a lot of the really maybe what like you said what seems simple stuff to do is actually usually some of the hard like the tech burners for me that's fun and and easy whereas stuff like this you have to like trick your brain to to kind of do things in a different way to have it come out correctly right this this is a a, a hollow piece that's dripping and the outline is dripping and then you have this these sort of um you know purple yeah. or fluorescent yeah you know, well, mist going through it yeah 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 very tricky but very cool it's cool but again very minimal paint was used here it still took a long time but you know roll the wall black and and i don't know i think there was like four or five greens and and the three purples so uh you know with paint being uh very expensive and hard to come by to be honest a lot of what i some of these things is like okay how can i keep painting as much as i paint without using a ton of paint and still do cool stuff so that's been part of the motivator for coming up with some of these uh kind of unique 
concepts, if you will. Right. Efficiency. Exactly. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, I, I didn't ask you about that, but you know, pain is so expensive, you know, and, and, you know, unless you're like sponsored or you own your, your own pain store, you know, these pieces, these pieces can become very expensive pieces to do each and every single one. Yeah, it, it can add up for sure. And here we go back to some, some uh, funkier uh, stylistic pieces, more color. You see, you know, there's, you know, I'm seeing, you know, some of the things that you, you know, you have in your toolbox, like you mentioned before, recurring the hearts. I see stars every now and then. And then there's this in the, uh, in the S, there's the top of the S, like this fin that comes up that extends out long. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't even remember where that <clears throat> originated from, but I've kind of stuck with it. And it gets tricky because when I paint shorter walls, I never know what to do with the top of my S because I'm always used to flaring it up like that. But, uh, you know, I, as much as I'm talking about style evolving and trying to always progress at the same time, I, I do like the idea of that, again, that basic structure that we saw with the Krylon fan tip that at the end of the day, you can look at a rusty piece and know I painted it and there's still that, that basic structure to it. Yeah. And we're going to run through a few more. We're coming to the top of the hour. And so we're about to, to wrap it up, but I want to be able to, to share some more of the images that you sent so that, you know, our audience could, you know, get to appreciate more of the work that you've been putting in all these years. Yeah, yeah. Again, very cool rendered piece, like you were saying, the rendered 3D. Yeah, a lot of, I've uh, been doing a lot of negative outlines with with the rendering and here here's another one with the bright 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 loud colors you know it's uh a lot of people tend to just always go with either the black or the the earth tone gray or beige buff colors but i always look for the you know the most bizarre buff colors yeah that's a good this is a good one Yeah, again, with the negative outline rendered, rendered 3D. Very cool. Very bold. I mean, they, they you know, they, they are definitely loud and vibrant pieces when you see these colors and your, your choice of color is so good. I appreciate that. Jeez, I'm noticing I do a lot of yellow outlines, but... It's probably one of my favorite outline colors to work with, but uh, you know, it just, it's always going to pop. Raw wall. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of, a lot of sewers, a lot of sewer tunnels, spending a lot of time in the sewers, you know, it's where you're going to find the, the raw stuff. So, so when you go to these places like these sewer tunnels, are you seeing anybody there before you or this sort of virgin territory? Uh, it's a mix. It's a mix. A lot of them, some are pretty known. Others are, are not known, but, uh, I'd say it's probably 50, 50. This is a very, very cool. Just simple. Two colors. Very effective. No need to, uh, to add more to it. Yeah, le less is more sometimes. It is. Nice truck. Yeah, this one here was at the in Mexico City. Uh, it was for the Meeting of Styles jam, but this was just we just painted some trucks before before the jam. And so you know, out of all these places that you've traveled. 
you know, are, are there any that, that really have stuck out to you, you know, with, where you mentioned sort of the, the camaraderie, the community, the, the adventure of it all? Is there anything that you'd say is like, you know, one of your yeah. top cities or top destinations? I, I guess where I'll leave it since we're kind of at the top here, but, you know, traveling, you know, whether it's for graph or just whatever, but it's, it's, it's really opened my eyes to other cultures and how hospitable and respectable most other countries are to to foreigners and to others compared to how we are here and you know i've just i'm always blown away at the level of uh hospitality and respect when in another country that I feel we definitely don't don't show enough of here outside of of the graph community you know and uh you know I've been going to Mexico a lot and it's it's just a completely different mindset interacting with with other people that you know you could meet somebody who's dirt poor and without hesitation, they would give you the shirt off their back if, if you needed it, you know, which I can't say too many people here who aren't dirt poor would, would do. So traveling is definitely uh, a great experience, you know, just in life, even whatever you're traveling for. I can't stress people should travel as much as they can. Rusty, thank you so much for those words and for sharing your story with us tonight and your pieces and your, you know, the development and uh, and all that you do. We we appreciate you. We're we're paying attention. You know, we're we're lucky enough here in Miami to see your work pop up every now and then, which is always a treat and something that we uh we enjoy. And so, you know, big ups to you and uh, and what you're doing and. And the um, the discipline and the determination and the fun that you're having it's great to great to hear about it and great to witness. I appreciate it. Miami's one of my favorite cities, and uh, I appreciate you guys having me on and you know being able to share my story. So you know, thank you for that. And uh, you know, go Pats. And uh, you know, you'll you'll be seeing more of me for sure. Thank you. We'll see you soon. All Have right. a great night, Rusty. Thanks again. Take care. So for everybody, thank you so much for spending an hour with us and hearing Rusty's story. Join us again this Thursday where we'll be joined by Brim interviewing Bash. And uh, thank you so much for your support. Uh, we'll see you very soon.